Hi everyone, it's Bethany, welcome back. In this video, we are going to have fun with this really pretty cling background stamp. Simon Says Stamp did send this over for me to create with, and this is called School Supplies. It is part of their latest release, and it is a six by six cling stamp. We're also going to have a lot of fun with colors, so I went ahead and pulled a variety of fun colors from Concord and Ninth, and before I do anything, I need to create a little stencil. So I need to grab a little square die and then we're gonna have fun ink blending and then using this fun background stamp. Okay, so if you have a square stencil, then you can go ahead and skip this part. But because I don't have a square stencil, I am simply going to create my own. I grabbed a little square from my nesting square die set and I am going to just create three different stencils. All of them are going to be identical, but I like to give myself some options when I'm blending a variety of different colored inks. So easy as that, now I have a little stencil to play with. Now I will just bring in a A2 size panel and I am simply going to tape it down right to my mat here. I also have some of this post-it tape that I'm going to use. And I'll bring in my first stencil. As I mentioned, I did cut out three and I will use those as I see fit. Sometimes as the ink starts collecting around the stencil, I like to just grab a new one. Not because the stencil isn't good, but because if the ink's wet, it might um, just get the other colors kind of contaminated or not give me the true color that I want. Okay, so I have done this technique before and it's something that is so simple, but I really, really like to do it. So in fact, I'll use, I'll use the washi tape on this as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to create a fun little design with ink and you can pick any colors. I'll link to another video that I did using this same technique and the card looks completely different because of the colors I chose. And I've also done this with circles as well and that was really, really pretty. The first color that I'm going to use is grapefruit and I'll just tap this off a little and bring this right onto my card. Now you can see that I let my stencil fall off the card, do you see how I have that little gap there? Because I wanted my first, my first little square to kind of be right in that corner. So this will be a different, different size than the rest of them. Okay, so then I'll just kind of get that to the color that I want. I really like the grapefruit color. It's so pretty, it's such a pretty, pretty orange. Okay, it's getting there. A little bit more focus over here. Okay, and that looks good to me. So I am really quickly going to just wipe up this ink. We're done with grapefruit. And I'm going to should just flip this this way. And there is our first color. Oh, I might have gotten, I'll probably cut that off anyway. I think I got a little close to my washi tape, which might result in a not clean line there, but I'm gonna be trimming this down. So I think it's gonna be just fine. Okay, for my next one, I'm gonna go just about here, making sure there's no ink on the other side that will smudge. And I think I'm gonna do it this way actually, so that my um, tape doesn't stick to my paper. Okay, so that looks good. And I will bring in another brush for honeysuckle. Bring a little bit on here, tap that off, and start blending this color in. So my idea here is to create a super fun background so that I can have my color placed in the background part and then I can do more of a black and white stamp on top of it. I think that that would be really neat. And I like to do this with stamps that I just don't feel like coloring, but I want to have lots of color on my cards. So I just decide another way to bring in that bold color element 
and for me this is one of my favorite ways to do so. Okay, I think I am just about there. Bump this up a little bit. I thought that this would be such a cute little back to school card. And believe it or not, I, I cannot believe I'm saying these words, but we are so close to going back to school already. And honestly, it makes me so sad. The summer just, it goes by faster and faster each year. Okay, so there is my next color. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna retire this stencil. I am not gonna throw it away. I can use it again another time once this is all dried. But because I'm moving on to yellow, I don't want to kind of blend any of that pink into my color. So for me, it's just worth grabbing just a different color. Okay, now let's see. I think I will do maybe here. I think that looks nice. All right, grab a new piece of tape and a new brush. Okay, sunflower. It's a very bold color. So I'm going to make sure I'm very careful with it. I want to bring in some bold, but I want to be careful with how I do it. Okay. Go. Up here. Mixing with that honeysuckle. And I just use my extra on my board. Um, and then we'll get some nice blending here with a new color. Okay. I like this one. It's kind of mustardy, which is really pretty. And hopefully that smooths out just a little bit, but I think we're going to be good to go. Okay. Let's pull that one up. Ooh, that is neat. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. We are definitely succeeding with getting some bold color. Sea glass will be the next color. Oh, hello, need a stencil. Okay, getting ahead of myself there. Let's do here, kind of just kind of cascading down the card. And again, the colors that you choose will really set the tone for your card. Okay, actually I need, I'm gonna bring in this post-it tape because it's so much gentler than my washi tape. That way I can place it over my actual card and not worrying, not worried about it ripping the paper, I think. Did I get that straight enough? The only thing about creating your own stencils is that sometimes it's hard to, I'll do that, um, line things up because you can't see through them, right? Like a, like a stencil allows you. Okay, let's do sea glass. Get some color. And I'm very eager to see the juniper. I think that's going to be the perfect end to this color combination. Okay, let's deepen this even more. Let me know, I'm curious, plus I would love to be inspired with ways that you like to bring in color to your cards when you have a stamp that you really wanna use but maybe you're just not in the mood to color. And I am one who likes to color, but there's sometimes when I just, I just want to do something a little quick and not necessarily um, bring all my coloring, coloring skills to the table. <laughs> or emerging coloring skills. Sometimes I wanna just do something different and I'm excited about how this is gonna turn out. Let's do here for our final color. I think that will be really nice. Okay, Juniper, and I will use the same brush. I think this is gonna be pretty bold, so I'm gonna be gentle bringing this in and then 
knowing I can bump it up. Oh, that's not actually coming in as bold as I thought it was going to. Okay. There we go. That is pretty. Okay, smooth that out a little bit. Some over here. Oh, I like that. It's gonna be really nice. Okay, getting excited to see how this is gonna turn out. Now I'm thinking, I'm trying to decide if I want to trim down this panel before I stamp or after I stamp. I think that's the color that I want to kind of stop with though, so I think I'll just finish up right there. Okay, final reveal and ooh, I like that. I really like that. All right, let's go ahead, clean everything up and I need to ponder what I want to do in terms of order here. I think I will, let me bring my stamp in and then I'll decide if I want to trim this down. There we go, okay. Okay, so my idea here is what I think I'll do, let's open up this stamp. I was so excited to see this when I opened up my mail. And what I'm thinking would be neat is to kind of have this come in from the side here. And I think I will do this without trimming it down. I kind of want to do something like that with a nice black ink. Let's, I'm not going to trim it down yet. I, I want to see, I want to see it all play out. So I'm going to need my larger Misty because of the size of my stamp here. I don't think this would fit in my mini. So bring this over here. I'm going to get an idea for where, I think, let's see, I think I had it somewhere like this. So if I do, I might even be able then to, yep, I can. Okay, I'm just gonna try talking to myself here trying to decide where I can put my paper to still get my full stamp. And just because I want to be certain, I'm going to just, um, I know I'll trim down at the bottom. So I'm gonna put a little piece of tape right there so it doesn't move. Okay, so I'm thinking I know I want to, I love this Copic marker, but I kind of want this to be a little bit more back to schoolish. So I'm, I'm not, I'm okay with letting that fall off the paper. I want to focus on including the pencils, the paper, the ruler, um, just more traditional school supplies, scissor handle and paper clips. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Oh goodness. No, I I got myself in a pickle. Okay, this is okay. I'm gonna cling this down, but I need to take my mat, my little foam pad out here. So no worries because everything is essentially in position, but I need to take that out. And now can I do that or do I need to put my, I think I can do that. I think we'll be fine. Usually I put my big rubber mount in here but I think we'll be good. I think that's gonna be in the way though. So thank goodness we have some tape and because I know I'll trim it down, I'm just going to do this part as well. Okay, double check. I think I like where that is going. All right, now let's grab some ink. I think this is brand new, so I'm just gonna kind of grab to remove any residue or coating from when it was created. We're good to go. I don't know if it's that important on these rubber stamps, but might as well. Okay. I'm going to just use this Memento ink. And, oh, that is pretty. Get an idea for all of the detail there. 
and I can't really remember how much or how little I need to stamp so you know I'm just going to do all of it all right so let's put this down I'm gonna grab my stamp pressure tool to really really get some pressure on there careful not too much though because those are some really delicate fine little details I don't want to smush them too much Ooh, oh my gosh this is gonna be cute okay I need more pressure here okay oh that's so neat okay I really like how this is this is going come on Oh, I have one little spot in a couple areas. Oh, that one worked. And I just need to focus right here. I wonder if I can even just really press. Oh, we're getting somewhere. I wonder if it's just where it is on that door. Okay, it is just about there. I have this one little spot. And you know what? If I can't get that, I will draw it in. Because maybe it's just not in my cards today. Okay, we're getting pretty close. I will double stamp that because I do want to get a little bit more contrast. So let's go ahead and add one more layer. Okay. This down. I will bring my pressure tool in. And make sure I also just really press down there. We'll check that out. Ooh, there we go. I'm gonna just draw that little spot in. I am not sure why I can't get that little spot, but oh, I love the rest of it. Really nice. Okay, so I am going to remove, being gentle here, but I will trim this down. There we go. And here as well. There we go. And now we can get a good idea for what that looks like. I think that's really neat. I like it. Okay, let me do some cleanup here and then we will, we'll trim that down and see what we can accomplish with a fun little crop there. Okay, before I forget, I am just going to connect that line. It's like it never happened. I just used this Micron pen and it's the one. I'm going to bring in my A2 die set and I think I will do just one size down. I want to give a lot of room to, I want to give this some breathing room here so I'm going to move that over as much as I can and I like that. Okay, I think that's fun. Let me put a little bit of tape up at the top. There we go, and then some at the bottom, and I will run this through my Platinum 6. All right, there we go. All right, here is the final crop here. Ooh, I like that. This is really sweet. I like this. Okay, let's make our card base and add a simple sentiment and we're gonna definitely call this a quick card. Using 110 pound cardstock, I have this cut to 11 by four and a quarter and then I will do a score right at five and a half and this will give me a top folding A2 size card. Let me just make sure that's nice and pressed into place and we're all set. Okay, we're gonna open this up and add our beautiful panel. Before that though, I will add some foam tape to the back side because we are really not going to have much dimension on this card, but I think it's something that's so simple to do, but really makes it look nice and polished just to bump up that card panel. All right. There we go, and, mm, oh, it's kind of transferring a little bit. I wonder if some of my ink 
is not maybe quite dry. So noted, nothing's ruined, but noted just in time so that I don't create a bigger boo-boo. Probably is the black ink. All right, let's put that there. Oh, cute. Look how simple that is. And I have these little sentiment strips. These are so fun. And I, I think that it would be really neat to kind of have it something like this. Kind of go a little bit straighter at a 90 degree angle with this one and then kind of have some fun with a little bit of tilt for the next one. You could all also do, you know, something like that. But you know, with the playfulness of this card, you could also do that. Um, I kind of like doing something a little bit like that. All right, I think what I will do is simply glue these down. I don't think I'm gonna add any additional dimension, although I, I really could. Well, why not? I think that that would be actually pretty nice. I'll go ahead and use these little foam squares and bump that up. Okay, I am going to place, oh, they kind of chose for me and actually I really like that. So I'm gonna place this here completely by accident, but based on where I had that, it was a perfect accident. Let me add some additional dimension to my second line. Now, this actually was all on one line it's your data shine. And all I did was just trim down right in the middle of those two words so that I could have two separate lines. I just think visually that is a little bit better. It was getting a little long for me, but I'll link everything that I use down below, including these little pre-made sentiment strips. They're really, really nice to have when you wanna do a quick card, plus they're really nice. Okay, I'm gonna do something like that and I really like that. Very fun. I am skipping any additional embellishments because I just don't think that it's needed at all. I really like how simple this turned out. I like that it is still very colorful, but I didn't have to bring in any coloring that would have taken much more time. I really like how this turned out. I think it's very sweet. I hope that you can take this technique and apply it to some of the stamps that you have in your craft room. And I can't wait to continue crafting with you in the next video. Be sure to give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.